verse 14, amen, of 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20. And I'll start reading there so we can just get a bit of a context, amen. But the Bible says, Then upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Somebody say the sons of Asaph. That's what we're going to call our men's choir, amen. How many men going to sing for the Lord when it's time to sing for the Lord, amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got to get that going, Jay Gray. I'm going to talk to Brian, amen. Sons of Asaph. Came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king, Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeru. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Would you, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the, of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they begun to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which would come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Come on, give God some glory in this house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we got a little more to cover than that, but I'm going to just stop reading right at because that's the gist of it. Amen. So, y'all, remember, we've been talking about, amen, King Jehoshaphat. And the title of this message is Jehoshaphat's Fast. Say that with me, Jehoshaphat's Fast. All right? Pretty, do I sound good to you? I'm a little loud to me. It's all right? It's good to you? Okay, it's probably the monitors, amen? All right, so, so, so remember the kingdom of Israel was separated into two, amen? You had the northern kingdom, which was Judah, and you had the southern kingdom, which was Israel, amen? Uh, after David and Solomon, we only have about roughly three, maybe four good kings in the, in the northern tribe, amen? I mean, in the southern tribe of Judah, amen? Let me see. The northern kingdoms, all right, I got this wrong. So the northern kingdoms was Israel, and the southern kingdoms were Judah, all right? So we have about, about three good kings, amen, uh, exceptional kings in the southern kingdom of Judah, amen? They were Hezekiah. Josiah, and guess who else? Jehoshaphat, all right? But even though Jehoshaphat was a great king, and even though he, he, he did major reforms, he pretty much single-handedly brought revival to the nation by the grace of God, amen? 
Jehoshaphat still had to go through a tough trial, troublesome times in his life. How many people know that you could be doing good, but you still got tests to go through? Amen? All right. Anybody hear me? Okay. And so that's Jehoshaphat. And so last time we talked about point number one, the problem. And we saw it enumerated, hallelujah, clearly in, 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 in verse number one, amen. Three armies got together and came against Jehoshaphat. And the three armies are as followed. You had Moab, Amnon, and the Edomites, amen, which are described as Mount Seir in the text, amen. Uh, 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 the Bible keeps it real. Jehoshaphat was afraid, amen, because one army is enough to do battle with instead of three. If anybody been jumped before, I use that example, amen. Hallelujah, you're getting the best of one, and right when you're getting the best of one, his ball come and hit you. You jump on him, and then another one hit you, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give me time so I can fight one of y'all, all right? And so that's what they're trying to do to Jehoshaphat, all right? So the man of God does the right thing. Second point. He calls a fast. Amen. Somebody say a fast. fast. All right. So Jehoshaphat was afraid he could lose everything. He could lose his life, but he does the right thing. The Bible says he seeks the Lord and proclaims a fast. He didn't go to his friends. Amen. And try to get his boys to jump on their boys. Amen. He sought the Lord. Amen. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we're going to remember the name of our God. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. And so he did a fast. We're not told what kind of fast, a one-day fast, two-day fast, three-day fast, 21-day fast, amen. We're not told because, hallelujah, what kind of fast is not as important as the fact that he fasted. A lot of times we can get caught up into what kind of fast instead of just going ahead and fast. God honors every fast from the one day to the 21-day. Come on, give God some glory, amen. Thirdly, we talked about the prayer because Jehoshaphat had a problem. He put a fast on it. But you see, some don't go out but by prayer and fasting. So he put a prayer on it as well. And in the prayer, Jehoshaphat is just enumerating to God. He begins to reminisce and remember God's preeminence, how big God is, his omnipotence, his sovereignty. Amen. He magnifies the Lord. Uh, uh, Jehoshaphat remembers his past victories. You see, sometimes when you're going through a tough time, you got to look back and remember everything that God brought you through before this so you can have enough faith to get through what you're about to go through. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? The God that delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will surely deliver me from the hand of this Philistine Goliath. That's what David did. Amen. All right? He remembers not only his past victories, he remembers God's promises. And if you remember, that's when Jehoshaphat goes back to 2 Chronicles, amen, chapter 7, and say, God, you said that if we would come in this house and that we would pray, you say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and what? And heal their land. That was God's promise. And Jehoshaphat prayed God's promise. Then he tells God the problem. And sometimes that's what you got to do. You got to tell daddy what you want. And it can't be no form prayer, no repetitious prayer, no now nah, lay me down to sleep. It can't be no stuff like that. You got to look up to heaven and tell God exactly what you're going through. And I didn't tell you this last time, but as you look at the text, amen, Jehoshaphat names who given him problems. You ever been to God and told God exactly who given you trouble? God is him, is her, and you call him by name. Sometimes you got to call him by name to your daddy. Anybody hear me up in here? So your daddy can handle some business, all right? And so he tells God the problem. Then he declares his dependence upon God. He says, God, we are helpless. We have no might against this great army. We are ignorant. We know not what to do, all right? And you are our hope. Our eyes are on thee, all right? And that's his prayer. After his prayer, the fourth point was the prophet. Because as soon as he prayed, God answered him. How many people know we're not praying to a dead God? Our God's not dead. Our God is alive, all right? And when we pray, he hears us and he answers us. And as soon as Jehoshaphat stops praying, the spirit falls on the congregation and a prophet stands up. Jehaziel, you see, uh, son of Asaph. And he be began to prophesy to Jehoshaphat. He told him, be not afraid. And he told him why he shouldn't be afraid. Why? For the battle is not yours, 
but God's. Whatever you're going through is really not your problem when you're a child of God. Woo! You see, when God adopts you, he adopts all your issues and your problems and all your inconsistencies and everything that you've been through, going through, and will go through. That's what happens in the adoption process. You put, he puts his name on you. And when he put his name on you, he said, I got your back. Your trouble is my trouble. The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. You see? You see? And so the prophet speaks. The prophet speaks. So just remember, whatever you're going through tonight, seek the Lord. Put a fast on it. You know? And cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Come on, give God some glory. Amen? Amen. You tell Jazzabeth, you won't have to fight. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, stand still. Stand still. That's our problem. We're moving too much. We're moving too much. We're moving too much. You tell us, stand still. All right? Now we get to point number five, the praise. The praise. All right? And in verse 18, the Bible says, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head. After, Je after, after uh, 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 Jaziel, what's, it, what's his name? Hallelujah. Let's see his name. Jehaziel. After Jehaziel spoke. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. What did they do? Worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to do what? To praise the Lord. God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Let's just stop right here. You see, this is what resting in the Lord looks like. This is what standing still looks like. When God tells you to stand still, amen, he's not trying to play freeze tag with you. While you stand still, you could be doing some things. And one of the things when God jump in the ring for you, one of the things you do when he tell you to stand still is to praise the most high God. Amen. You cheer him on up in there. Anybody hear me up in there? This is our reaction, y'all, to God. When God gives us a promise to help us, gives us a word that he's going to be there for us, give us a word that the sickness is going to be healed, the bill is going to be paid, you're going to get the job, you're going to have a roof over your head. When he gives you a word, Hallelujah. Your reaction to God is to praise him. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? You see, you can't wait until something is done. Woo! See, some of y'all waiting to praise God when the situation change. But I got a word for you. When God give you a promise, the situation has already changed. It's already, it's already changed. It's already shifted. It's already. When God tell you he going to do it, it's already done. When you get the promise, it's time to praise him. Anybody hear me up in here? You see, when Jehazahel, Jay, Told everybody that the battle is not yours, but the Lord. The enemy was still in the field. They had all of their weapons. They were in, hallelujah, all of their armor. Nothing had changed, y'all. They praised God for the promise. And I'm here to tell you that the promise is enough. Anybody hear me up in here? All right, all right. I have in my notes... God's check, because that's all a check is. A check is a promise to pay. It's a promise to pay. You go to the store and you write a check. That's, the check is not money. It's just a promise, a piece of paper promising the store that you're going to send them money, that you're going to pay them. You see, God's word is his promise to us. Ooh. And one of God's checks is just as good as cash. Anybody hear me up in here? Not a single one bounce yet. 
And I feel like I'm doing God wrong by saying cash because sometimes cash come and cash go. You got inflation and deflation. You got quantitative easing. You got days where cash might not be, Brian, worth a little bit of nothing. So, so God's check is as good as gold. Anybody hear me up here? His promise. And Israel, Jehoshaphat, began to praise him, y'all, just for the promise. Matthew Henry says, an active faith can give thanks for a promise, though it be not performed yet. An active faith can get praise for the promise, even though it's not performed yet. You see, sometimes you got to praise God in advance. Anybody hear me up in here? Have you praised him in advance before? Look, 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 look. I'm telling you, listen, the bill's still not paid. But God tell you, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. But you start, you start to praise him. You start to, to praise him. Listen, 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 listen. The pain is still in your body. Huh? Huh? But the promise is by his stripes you have been healed. And healing is the children's bread. Have you praised him for the promise? Anybody hear me up in here? You don't have the car yet you're praying for. You don't have the job yet you're seeking for. You don't have the spouse yet you're knocking for. But you got the promise, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open. And the promise should be enough to praise him. Oh, I'm going to get excited by myself in here if y'all ain't going to get excited. All right. Listen to me. Listen to me. Loved ones still not saved. Loved ones still not saved. But he promised in that book of Acts, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and all thy household shall be saved. Anybody praised him in advance yet? Loved ones still lost as a goose, but hey, I got a promise to hold on to. All right? God, I thank you, you said. It ain't changed yet, but I thank you that you said. He said, but pastor, the situation had changed and I'm still in a problem. I'm still got a, got a situation. I still got a predicament. I still got this pain. I still am surrounded by my enemies. But you don't understand. You don't understand. You see? Sometimes you got to learn. Ooh, not only just to praise him in advance, but praise him in the night, we call it. You ever heard of that before? You praise him in the night. All right? Come on, come on, pick up your Bible. Pick up your Bible. Come on, turn to Acts 16. I ain't gave it to him. It's Acts 16. Turn to Acts 16. Because somebody in a night right now, and they need to figure out how to get out the night. And I'm giving you keys. I'm giving you keys to open the door, amen, to your night right now. Amen. And the key is praise tonight. The key is praise tonight. The key is praise tonight. Praising him for what he about to do. Praising him for the promise he made you. Praising him even though it hurt. Praising him even though we ain't getting along. Praise him. Hey! You don't understand the power of praise tonight. Praise changes things. See, you think praise is just a garment. Praise is a weapon. Hmm. You see, the Bible says in Acts 16, 22, hallelujah. Oh, God. Let's see. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and the multitude, talking about Paul and Silas, rose up against them. And the magistrate rent off their clothes, beat them up and tore their clothes off, but commanded them to be beaten for spreading the gospel and uh, exercising a demoniac little girl, amen, and, and in verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes upon Paul and Silas, they cast them into prison. The boss was locked up, charging the jailer, jailer to keep them safely, who haven't received such a charge, because usually they would charge the jailer, keep them safely, and if they get released, your life for their life. That's what they would do. So the jailer received such a charge, he thrust them into the inner prison. He just didn't put them in the periphery of the prison. He put them on the inside of the inside of the prison. All right? All right? As though it was solitary, 
They cast him into the prison, huh? Thrust him into the inner prison and made their feet fast with stocks. They lock him up with those wooden apparatus. It either go around your neck or around your feet or around your neck and your feet. You see him up there, they in there. All right? It's a bad situation. A problematic situation. They're in a predicament. A pickle. And they in pain. The Bible says in verse 25, and at midnight. Anybody hear me up in here? See, midnight is when things get worse. If you got a problem, amen, that problem will wake you up at night, midnight to 3 o'clock is sometimes the worst part of the night. If you go to bed sick, amen, midnight to 3 o'clock, amen, usually you're going to wake up and the pain going to be worse. But it was at midnight when they was in pain and things was at their worst. The Bible says Paul and Silas, they prayed. But look, look what else they did. And did what? And sang praises. Unto who? Unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Okay? How these boys in this prison, locked up, shackled up, in stocks, and still praising the Most High God. What do they have to praise him about? You know what they praise him about? They praise him for the promises. They praise him for the promises. And you see, when you praise him, the Bible says in 26, and suddenly. Oh, you see, I can't get into that just now. I just can't get it. I'm moving too much ahead of myself. Somebody say suddenly. You see, when you praise, things begin to happen. You see what I'm saying? See, the Bible says that was a great earthquake. I'm going to have to move on and read it because y'all just pulling it out of me. The foundations were shaking of the prison. And immediately the doors were what? Were open. And everyone's bands were what? Were loose. Not just Paul and Silas. You see, praise is so strong, it's not only going to loose you out your predicament, but if anybody else around you, the devil going to have to let them go. He's going to have to loose your wife and loose your kids and loose your neighbor and loose your people. Woo! Somebody say praise. praise. You see, they begin to praise him, y'all. You're not praising him enough. Pastor, I ain't got nothing to praise him for. Praise him for the promise. Woo! Let's go back, 1620. Come on now, come on. Y'all get me excited. We still early in the service. You see? Verse 20, the Bible says, And they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Jehoshaphat just recaps what God told them through the prophet the next morning. And they didn't wake up late, they woke up early. All right, that, that's faith right there. They know God is about to bless them. They woke up early. And Jehoshaphat reminded them, you see, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Sometimes you need to be reminded of the promise. Amen. That's why you got to open your Bible. That's why you got to come to church. That's why you got to come to Bible study. Amen. It's not to tell you what you don't know. It's just to remind you what God had already promised you. That's all it's about. That's all it's about. All right. And so Jehoshaphat tells them, amen, believe in the Lord. He's strengthening their faith. Believe in his prophets. Amen. Look at that. That could be a, that could be a sermon right there. Believe in his prophets. What's going to happen when you believe his prophets? So shall ye prosper. You ain't prospering in it? You ain't prospering? Do you believe his prophet? Woo! Verse 21, let's keep going. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy, Endure it forever. Now, 21 is a, is a weird little verse, man. The Bible said Jehoshaphat consulted the people. What he did, Malbo, he called a war council. All right? Got his generals together, his lieutenants, his captains, amen. Got everybody together. He said, listen, we're about to go to war. That's a war council. Because they talk about what they're about to do before the war. See, without a vision, the people perish. 
can't come up in there running and running, running uh, going, going to play football with no place. Listen, without a vision, the people perish. So they get together, amen, and they're having a war council. The difference with this war council, instead of talking about strategies, maneuvers, weapons, tactics, and terrain, this war council goes spiritual. Anybody hear me up in here? They talk about singers. They talk about songs. They talk about notes. They talk about praise and worship. Matthew Henry said, there's never been a war council like it. Where all the generals get together and say, who could sing around here? The Bible says, amen, that they, that they got together, consulted with the people, and appointed what? Singers unto the Lord. Huh? Now look at your imagine. They marching out there, CP, and they put the worship team in front of them. They go on the wall, and Bryant, and Chancey, amen, Marina, Christina, hallelujah, uh, 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 Marilyn Hope, amen. Y'all know they did. They all out in front of us. And Brother Carlos got a portable piano guitar. All right? They marching in front of us, and we go into battle. And that's strange to me. That's a funny thing. You see, but when you walk with the Lord for any time, the Lord going to make you do funny things and strange things and give you the victory in the end. All right? I remember Moses, when everybody was going to battle, God led Moses to stand on the mountain and raise his hands. They said, Moses, what's wrong with you? Why don't you get a sword and come out there and fight? Oh, no, 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 no. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm fighting. Hey, God, I'm just fighting the unseen armies behind the visible armies. And if I beat the unseen armies, hallelujah, the visible armies going to fall. Anybody hear me up in here? Angels and principalities and powers. You see? Hallelujah. Anybody heard about Joshua and the battle of Jericho? See, sometimes God going to make you do strange things in the natural. But he's working something out in the spiritual. And I can see the men of Jericho looking down at Joshua as they go round and around that wall, amen, and shouting unto the Lord on the last day, huh? But they wasn't laughing when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down, hallelujah. God will make you do some strange things. What about Gideon, who sent home most of his army, took 300 of them with him. And when, hallelujah, you would think that 300 would have advanced weapons or advanced tactics, he took 300 with some jars of clay in the hand and sent them out to a flashlight. Huh? Sometimes God going to have you do strange things and people going to question your tactics. People going to question your movements. But you just got to trust what God told you and the battle it's not yours, it's the Lord's, and he's going to give you the victory. Come on, give God some glory. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. You see? In verse 22, look, 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 they're they about to sing. But, but before they sing, amen, they, the Bible in 21 says that they, they tell us what they were singing. So they out there, Carlos out there with his, his piano guitar. Brian out there, amen. Chance out there. Huh? What they singing? They singing, "Praise the Lord for His mercy endured forever." That's what they singing while they marching. Hmm? Praise the Lord for His mercy endured forever. You know, I just was imagining what that sound like. And would y'all be able to help me out with a little exercise for a second? I want the men of God to stand up in here. You see, ain't nothing like a singing man of God. Ain't nothing like a... See, things begin to happen when the men of God sing. But, but women of God, y'all take it easy. Get ready, get ready, because I'm, I'm going to need y'all too here in a second. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, men, I want y'all to sing this for me. Amen. I'm going to help y'all out, and Grace is going to help the ladies out. I just want y'all to say, uh, let's see. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come on, come on, put your man in it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Grace, what are we going to have to sing? Lay it, sing. Praise. 
His mercy endures forever. His mercy. Ladies. Mercy endures for. Come on, ladies. His mercy. His mercy. Come on, ladies. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Come on. His mercy. His mercy endures. Come on, man of God. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise. This is the army. They're coming out. Come on. Your hands are fed. This army. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, brother Carl. March with me, brother Carl. Come on. Come on, Doug. Come on. Come on, man of God. Come on. If you close, come on. Let's march. Come on. Come on. Come on, Elmo. Come on. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Mark, where you at? Come on. Somebody march with me. Hallelujah. They marching, y'all. They singing. They praising the Lord. They don't have the victory yet, but they praising him in advance. His mercy endures for Praise the Lord. Come on, give God some glory in this house. Give him some glory in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they out there doing that, man. They sing and praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. You see what I'm saying? And, and the Bible says in 22, y'all still up out there? And when they began to sing, mm, just like Paul and Silas, the Bible says, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, huh? the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which will come against Judah, and they were smitten. You see, Matthew Henry says, when you begin to praise the Lord, it does something to God. You see? Number one, God going to come down and see what's going on when somebody praising him. It get his attention. He said, man, who's that? All right? That's what he mean when he say he inhabits the praises of his people. If you want God to show up in your situation, you just begin to praise the Lord. Anybody hear me up in here? Oh, wait, wait, y'all, y'all don't start that. Wait up, wait up. You see, you see, 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 that's how you get God's attention. All right? And second thing is, when you begin to praise God, he likes it so much, he wants to give you more material to praise him for. Woo! <laughs> He said, oh, I like this. I wonder what they would do if I would give them this. If I would deliver this. If I would bless with this. If they're singing now and nothing ain't happened yet, amen. Just imagine what they're going to do when I come through for them. You see? Woo! You see, when they began to sing, all right, it didn't take long. The Bible says that the Lord set ambushments. That's an ambush. An ambush is a surprise attack. It mean that they, that they didn't know it was coming. Something hit them that they didn't expect. The Lord attacked these three armies, y'all, by surprise, y'all. And it all happened because God's people on a fast began to praise the Lord. Come on, give God some glory, amen. Come on, give him some glory in this house. All right. For his mercy endures forever that's the anthem y'all they've been singing that from the beginning all right and we got to learn how to infuse that into what we doing here today that's the that's the anthem of israel his mercy endures forever david sung that jehoshaphat sung that and we got to sing it too you see come on give him some glory in this house amen all right? Point number six. Let's look at the victory. The victory. We're going to look closely at the victory. Y'all still up out there? Yeah. Hey, man, I'm just giving you some tools to come out of your situation. He fasted when he had a problem, a threefold problem. But he also began to praise the Lord for the promise. Let's look at the victory. All right? The Bible says in 23, for the children of Ammon, and Moab, look what it says. It says, they stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, 
utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. In verse 23, it tells us exactly what happened in the victory. You see, the three armies started fighting each other. You see? The old songwriter tells us that praise is not only a weapon, but it's a strategic weapon that sends confusion into the enemy's camp. All right? If you want to confuse the devil, if you want to confuse people that's coming against you, confuse the enemy and the spiritual principality, you begin to praise God. And sooner or later, hey, God, though they came in one way, they're going to leave seven different ways. God's going to put confusion in the enemy's camp. They're they going to start fussing and trying to hurt each other instead of hurting you. All right? And that's what happened. It says that, hallelujah, Ammon and Moab, which are Lot's descendants, all right, began to fight against Mount Seir, which is Esau's descendants, the Edomites. And so Lot's descendants began to fight Esau's descendants. Huh? And we don't know what they was fighting for, but we know God did it. All right, God did it. All right? And the Bible tells us that after Amnon, Ammon and Moab finished with Mount Seir, finished with Edom, all right, then they start fighting one another. So they killed up Mount Seir, the Edomites, and then they said, well, we ain't got nothing to do. We might as well kill each other too. All right? All right? The Bible say happen, okay? But the Bible says in Psalm 2 that when the wicked come against the anointed, the Bible said the Lord shall have them in derision, all right? Now, Judah don't know what's going on, okay? Last time we left Judah, they singing, praise the Lord. And they just, they just praising him and they marching. They don't know what's going on, all right? God done set the ambushment. God got them fighting down there. God then got into a situation where they all done kill each other up. And Judah just marching. Praise the Lord. Mercy endures forever. They just praising him. All right? Now Judah getting close to the battlefield, y'all. Okay? And the Bible is about to tell us in 24, and when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they come into a place, Jen, where, hallelujah, they're going to be able to see the battlefield. So they marching, amen, they know, hey, God, God is with them, and they got the promise, but the battle getting close, all right? And when, when your time getting close, amen, you got the promise, all right? You know God with you. You're praising God. You done fasted. But sometimes when it's getting close to that time, that day, hey, God, and, and, and listen, it's crunch time, and, and they're about to walk to this tower. They're going to see the whole battlefield. They know they're about to see the whole enemy's army, three armies. And I can see in the spirit that they get nervous as they're approaching the battlefield. And they say, all right, God, when you going to show up? All right, God, we're close now. All right, God, we're about to see him now. Okay, God, any time now. But what they didn't know was that it was already done. It was already done. It was already done. You see, sometimes you could be worried about something that's already done. <laughs> you worry about a job that's already yours you worry about a bill that's already paid God done woke the person up in the middle of the night they go and pay the bill they, the bill is already paid the, the car is already yours the, the woman is already in love with you the, the man has already got the ring to marry you you're, you're worried about something that's that's already done that's already done you worried about somebody else's position, but God got your position and waiting. It's waiting for you and nobody can take it. Here you are, boo, they mad about something. That's already what you're tripping for. And it's foolish to God. God looked down, God looked down and they get nervous when the whole army is already dead. You worried about dead problems. You're worried about dead problems. It's already done. Listen to me. It's already yours. Listen to me. It's already paid. Listen to me. It's already. I done had times in my life where I walk into a home, amen, hallelujah, and I know from the time they built it, 
you get a feeling it was already mine. Anybody hear me up here? It was, all, it was always mine. You walk up on a land and you, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You see? Old folks say what God has for you is for you. It, nobody could take nothing that God. You're worried about dead problems. It's already done. And you're sitting there crying over this thing. Can't sleep over this thing. Tripping over this thing. Come on, look at your neighbor. Look at him good now. And say, neighbor, neighbor. is already done. done. Look at your other neighbor now. Look at your other neighbor. All right? And say, neighbor, neighbor. is already yours. yours. Come on, give him some glory in this house. For his mercy endures forever. They out there marching, getting, oh, we about to get cool, we about to get cool. Nervous and worried about stuff that's already done. You see? You see? Because the battle not ours. The battle is the Lord's in 24. And when Judah came to wash the watchtower, this hill, this precipice, in the wilderness, they'd be able to see the battlefield. They looked into the multitude, and they saw an army there, y'all. But it was an army of dead bodies. They were dead bodies falling to the earth. And how many? None escaped. And I don't know how that happened. But the last two men was out there and they wound up ugh, hitting each other right at the right spot. But none of them escaped. Or one of them hit the last one on the head and he run and fall on his sword. Oh. <laughs> none of them escaped. God totally annihilated the armies. Pastor, what does this speak? You see, it speaks that God will outdo and overperform every prayer and every promise he makes to you. All right? He will always outdo what you think and overperform what he promised. You see, Mike, Jehoshaphat in the essence, the spirit of his prayer was, help us not get destroyed. These three armies come and get me. God, we just want to survive. We just want them not to kill us. We just want them not to spoil us and rob us and jack us. That's all we want. You see? But the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, hope, think, or imagine. When you are saved and you are walking with God, and when you pray and you ask God for something, God will always give you double for your trouble, seven times more than what you want. Exceedingly, abundantly above all, but I say, lucky I can't sing in here. I'm telling you. Listen to me now. You see? God did it, y'all. And he did more than they expected. I have in my notes, they won and never swung a sword. They won and never threw a punch. They won and never fired a shot. They won and never lost a man. They won and never lost a limb. They won and never got hit not a single time. They won and not a fingernail was broken, not a hair on their head, amen, was out of place. They won. <laughs> Anybody hearing me up in here? That's the kind of total and utter victory God going to give you when you allow God to fight your battles. Come on, give God some glory in this house. The battle is not yours. 
but God's. Point number seven, point number seven, the spoils, the spoils. And this is our last point, amen. It's just the power of a fast, Brother Harvey. When we fast God's way and we, and we praise him and we trust him, amen, God is able to do some amazing things, all right? And we watch them praise him. We watch them get the victory, amen. And now we want to talk about the spoils, amen. And you say, say, Pastor, the only thing I know is spoiled children. No, that's not what we're talking about right here. Spoils is when you win a battle and you pick up all the rewards and stuff that's on the ground after the battle. That was the old King James Elizabethan word, amen, for hallelujah, uh, picking up, a God, the gold and the jewels and everything else. They call it spoiling the enemy. And in verse 25, look what it says. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they can carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. All right? Now, that's an amazing thing. You see, when, when God is fighting for you, all right, you're going to take more time collecting the spoil than you're going to take time fighting. Anybody hear me up in here? <laughs> collecting the blessings is going to be more tiresome than the actual battle. All right? All right? The Bible said they got riches in abundance, precious jewels, and it was more than they can carry. All right? He said, well, Pastor, how did this happen? Well, back in the Bible days, when men would go to war, amen, they would take a lot of their riches with them. They wouldn't leave it home. They would take a lot of it with them. They would take bags of gold, amen, uh, 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 emeralds and rubies and and diamonds, amen, and some of the most expensive things. He said, Pastor, why would they do that? It was just in case they got beaten and they had to run, all right? If you was running from an enemy, amen, who was chasing you with a sword, nothing better than to take that big herringbone off your neck <laughs> and throw that big herringbone on the ground. Your enemy going to stop chasing you and see that gold, let you go free for the jewelry that's on the ground. Anybody hear me up in here? First lady, am I lying? This was the Bible way. And so when they, they come in to battle, way down with all kind of treasure, just in case they had to run. All right? And that's why when they start running, it'd be like, I think that's where they got Mardi Gras from. They, they, they start running and just start throwing stuff. All right? Not that you should be out there. I'm just saying. All right? That's why they had so much. Now in verse 26, look, it tells us it took them three days to pick up the treasure. Three days. All right? Could you imagine waking up and going on and saying, we got to go out there again, y'all. There's still some gold left out there. All right, I guess I'll come again. 26. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka until this day. See, that word Baraka means blessing. The Valley of Blessing. These two things are what we call in English an oxymoron. They're not supposed to go together. See, a valley is a low place. It's a dark place. It's a dangerous place. A painful place. A sad place. A depressed place. A valley. That's why David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's a, it's a place you don't want to be. But there's something strange about this valley. Is the last place you want to be. But when you find yourself in it, a blessing is there too. 
Ooh, it's the valley of Baraka. Listen to me. I've learned walking and living this life with God that the greatest problems I find myself in, the greatest predicaments that come against me, the greatest pain me and my little family got to go through, the greatest enemies that surround us and look like they're about to take us out, the greatest valleys that God lead us through turn out to be the greatest blessings in my life and in my family's life. The valleys turn into Baraka, valleys of blessing. You got to know that about you, God. What's hurting you tonight? What you going through right now? What's causing you the most pain, even as you sit here? What is your valley tonight? I'm here to tell you that if you just let God do what God can do, that he'll never bring you through a valley for nothing. And every valley he bring you through will turn into a valley of Baraka, a valley of blessing. You just got to wait on him. You just got to wait. I don't know what you're going through. I, but I know my God says that he work at all things. He causes all things to work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. A valley of Baraka. If you've lived a long enough time with the Lord, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, every sickness is a blessing. Every bill you can't pay. Every time they kick you out of the house. Every time they repossess a car. Every time they fire you from the job that you thought you wanted, you thought you loved. Wait a while. Greater is coming. It's a valley of Baraka. I don't care what you got to go through in life. It don't matter what it is. If you're a child of God, he's going to teach you something through it. It's the, the L is not a loss. The L is a lesson. And God going to bring you out with spoils. He's going to bring you out with spoils. Listen to me. I done cried over some things. I done cried over some people. All right? And every time God met me, every time God taught me something, every time God grew me, every time God matured me, every time, every time, that listen to me, listen to me. You're going to get to a place in your Christian life where you're going to begin to live out trials like James. Where you're going to begin to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You're going to begin to live out your pain like Paul. When Paul said, I rejoice in afflictions and I, I rejoice, hey God, in infirmities. Listen to me, listen to me. You're going to begin to live out the valleys like David, I'm telling you. In that psalm, he says, I was, I, was, I was happy when you afflicted me. I was glad. It is good that I have been afflicted, David says. Because in that valley, he taught me something. In that valley, he molded me. See, sometimes we can't learn what we need to learn without the fires of affliction. Are you with me here so far? Are you listening to me? We so stubborn, we so stiff necked, we so hard hearted. Well, he gotta put us in the oven to mold us. He gotta take us to the valley. And here you are complaining about the valley when the valley was always meant to bless you. Ooh! God, why this pain? God, why they stab me in the back? God, why they betray me? Why they talking about me? God, why the hospital? God, why they kick me out? God, why I was fired? You begin to question God. And you Hebrews begin to act like these Gentiles where you wave your fists at God. Don't ever wave your fists at God. How you wave your fists at somebody who bringing you to a valley to bless you. Oh, God, y'all got me working hard up in it. Listen, it was a valley of Baraka. 
a valley of blessing. Matthew Henry says that this was God's design all along. He brought this great army to bless him. You see, Jehoshaphat was a reformer. He was reviving the whole land. And when you look at the army coming in, you would say, oh God, it's going to stop the revival. The army was not to stop the revival. It was to pay for the revival. It was, oh! You see, look, you're looking at the three armies coming against you. But God looking at the three armies that's about to be defeated and all the gold that they bring in and all the jewels that they bring in. You see, one army is not enough to bless you. Oh, Jehoshaphat. I got to bring three because what I'm going to put you through. Oh, God. Oh, God. You see, you're looking at your trouble and you're surrounded. You're like, God, it's so much trouble. It's so much pain. It's so big. And God's saying, it's got to be a big enough problem because that's how big the blessing going to be when I'm done. You can't get the sword of Goliath without defeating the giant. Ooh. Ah. Listen to me. What you going through tonight? What's your issue? What's your valley? Look at it again with me. Look at it again with me through eyes of faith. It's not a valley of death. It's a valley of Baraka. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. There was an interesting thing that Samson says in his riddle. He says that God, he'll pull honey out the eater, honey out the lion. And what the devil says to destroy you, God's going to pull honey out of him. So. Are you understanding me tonight? That marriage is going to be your biggest blessing. Pastor, you don't know my wife and my husband. No, no, no. Listen to me. You're just looking at it wrong. You're not, you're not going into it right. That, that person on the side of you that's aggravating you even tonight to no end. Don't look at him right now. That's going to be your greatest blessing. All right? Them children, even the ones that's way with, that you've been praying for, been running wild, don't look like they're ever going to be saved. That's going to be your valley of Baraka. That's going to be your greatest blessing. Here's a word of faith. You think that daddy ever thought the prodigal was going to be his best son? The prodigal turned out to be his best son. <laughs> Wait a while. Single that loneliness? That quiet house? Those nights by yourself? That you cry and nobody see you cry. God see you. He see every single tear. And you're watching one after another get married and you're like, oh God, why? Why this valley, God? Why this valley? Wait a while, wait a while. What the Bible say? He collect all your tears. Are they not in his bottle? Wait a while. He building you up. He building them up for you. And when you're going to get it, you're going to say, God, it was worth every day, every hour, every moment I was lonely, God. I was waiting. I was waiting. I would have settled for this one and settled for that one, but you had this one coming for me. God, I will wait again if you will have me wait. That 
financial trouble you're going through. Can't pay this and can't pay that. That fussing you're doing at the house fund. <laughs> y'all fussing about all kind of other stuff, but it's money what y'all fussing for. Because y'all ain't start fussing until y'all look at the account together. <laughs> yeah. And your heart, you're like, it's over, I'm gone. No, 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 no. Don't miss your blessing through this. Through this pain, both of y'all going to deliver something. The old songwriter said, being broke made me rich. <laughs> See, it was the hard times and the struggle. Just, just wait a while. Struggle together. The most important to me and first lady, most important time of our relationship was the struggle. This time is the fun time, but that, that didn't build us. What built us is being, on that, being in that house with no heat, sleeping on that floor. What built us was living with moms. You understand what I'm saying? Coming to Lafayette with $50 in our pocket and making it work. That's what built us. We had to get creative. You understand what I'm saying? How long this whole chicken going to stretch? Can we multiply these blue runner beans? It's so you think when trouble come now, we worry? Paul said, you got to know how to be abased and how to abound. You got to know both. And God is trying to teach you how to be abased before he abound you. Because, oh, God. I'm, You're fussing over a valley of blessing. You need to be where you at right now. There's no other way to teach you what needs to be taught right now than where you are right now. There's, there's no other way. You're not going to get it no other way. You must needs go through Samaria. He looking at God when these three armies come. And some people are mad at the three armies. It was always intended to bless you. Verse 27. We got to get out of here. Let's 27. Y'all still up out there? Then they returned. Every man of Judah and Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them. To go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. You see, to get money would have been good but that's not enough, no. See, see, the spoils wasn't just monetary. You understand what I'm saying? That's why God just don't make you rich all of a sudden. He put you through a process because he's going he to equip you with some things you need. Oh, God. <laughs> Broke going to teach you some things that you need. If he made you rich without teaching you the things first, You hear me, B? So you got some intangibles that you need to get in the van. There's some things he's going to give you more than money, Mike. The, the, the money. The money, nothing, man. The money come and money go. You see, oh, God. You see, what he give you in the valley, Doug, is worth more than the money. See, because what he give you in the valley could never be taken away from you. So bad times happen, the money go. 
you still got what you got in the valley. <laughs> and you can always go and make some more money. Because you got what he gave you in the valley. All right, all right, come on, come on, come on. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hold on, I just, come on, I, I ain't been eating everything I need. I ain't got my, all my nutrients. Listen, so if I flash out, just stay with me. If I pass out, come catch me. Listen. Joy. Joy. They got more than money in that valley. They got joy. The Bible said they came back to Jerusalem with joy. You see? Here's your word. Here's your word. God is going to give you joy from this place of pain. The valley in joy. Joy is going to come in the morning. Trouble don't last all week. Weeping may endure for a night, I'm telling you, but, 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 but joy, just, just have faith, just believe, amen. I, listen, I know it hurts right now. I, I've been in some hurtful situations. I'm praying and I'm waiting on God and, and, and God ain't move when I want him to move, amen. But, but he ain't got to move when I want him to move, listen, but he's always right on time. And, and when I get what he promised me, sweet joy. So much joy, Brandon, you can't even remember the pain. <laughs> so much joy you can't remember the pain they come up to you and ask you about the struggle oh yeah 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 yeah. that's how Jesus is going to be about the cross that's what Hebrews say huh? for the joy that was set before him he despised the shame but it was all for the joy See, sometimes you got to carry a cross before you get your crown for the joy, for, for the joy, for the joy that was set before him. I'm going through it, but joy is on the other side. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, joy is on the other side. If you could just keep on going, if you could just keep on moving, if you could just not give up. Look at your other neighbor. Look at your say neighbor. neighbor. Joy, joy is, on is on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right across the street. It's right across the street. It's Come back to Jerusalem with joy, y'all. You see, I know you can't see it right now. But please through eyes of faith, please. God, in the name of Jesus, bring them to that place, God. That place where they already have it. Bring them down in the spirit, God. Give them a snapshot, a peek, a, 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 a preview, God, of where they're going to be, what they're going to be driving, where they're going to be living, who they're going to be marrying, who they're going to be hugging to. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, how the marriage going to be, how the children going to be. Give them a snapshot, God. A glimpse. Of the joy to come. You ain't going to recognize yourself. You ain't going to recognize your husband. You ain't going to recognize your wife. You ain't going to recognize your marriage. You ain't going to recognize your children. You ain't going to recognize your bank account. Oh my goodness. <laughs> joy. In verse 28. Listen, I'm almost done. It's just so rich. It's just so rich. Bible says, and they came to Jerusalem with psalteries, harps, trumpets. Look where they went. Unto the house of the Lord. Now, I just got to stop right here for a second. See, because in verse 5, when they was in trouble, where they came? To the house of the Lord. And now they done got their blessing. <laughs> Three armies worth of spoils that took three days to pick up, that they barely could carry, and where the first place they come. Now, now watch me, Jay Gray, I gotta tell him this. Don't forget the house of the Lord when you get your blessing. Sean White, do you hear me, Sean White? Don't forget the house of the Lord when you get your blessing. The same place you was in crying and praying for God to help you out. 
when he come through for you, you come right back to that place. Not another church, that place. You understand me? They got some that been blessed with children. They, they leave the place. Oh, God. Oh, God. They get the job and they leave the place. They get the little wife they want, they leave the place. They get the little husband they want, they leave the place. You come back to the spot where God saw you. Where he heard you. All right? And what do you do when you get there? Huh? Well, I got a few suggestions for you. You praise him. You praise him. You be at that altar. I got it. 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 You was at the altar crying. Got to come back and praise him for it. All right? Jehoshaphat went back to the house of God. What else? Not only praise him, worship him. Nobody like you, Lord. We singing that, you should be laid out. Marina hit that, oh, oh, you should be roll rolling. You should be, look, nobody like you. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? And you not only know by words, but you know by experience. You say like the Israelites are heard, we had heard what our fathers, but now we know. Oh God, oh God. All right? And guess what else? Oh, yeah, you bring your praise and your worship, but don't you go out there and get three days of spas that you can barely could carry and not bring your tithe and offering in the house of the Lord? Come around, you. Hit your lick. You're sitting on 1.5 million and then you, you act like you don't know me. I done preached the faith in you for you to receive the blessing. Got you through the long night when you was crying. You're going to get that and go to some other church. I'm about the name of church. Go to some other church. You better come back to this house. Give him your praise. Give him your worship. Huh, kid? Bring your offering and bring your tithe. Don't worry about me. I'm in the spirit. I'm going godly gangster. <laughs> you won't get that word to know how to pray to God and know how to get blessings from God. Know how to fast and praise him and not come back and build up the house of God. You better get it and come bring it. You better get it and come bring it. You better get it and come bring it. Let the Lord put a hole in your bucket and it go out just as fast as it came. It, you better bring it. You better, oh, let me get it right. You better bring it. Wait, 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 wait. You, you better bring it. Wait. Oh, but I done had some that brought it, yeah. I ain't going to talk about that. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah. Get it and bring it. Jehoshaphat went straight to the house of the Lord. Give him joy. All right. But watch this. Listen, listen, listen. Watch this. Verse 29. I mean, listen, we're almost done, y'all. Come on now. I spent three hours watching the Saints game. Y'all can't watch with me an hour. I'm going to spend another three hours Sunday. Hoping it go in overtime. I'm just going to do 29 and 30. No, no, no. It's going to be fast. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him rest round about. <laughs> Anybody appreciate quiet? Anybody appreciate rest? Anybody appreciate peace? You see, the spoils that God going to give is not just money, y'all. But it's joy Joseph had come with. And it's quiet and peace. You see? What it was, Pastor, well, what the, the other enemies had saw 
what God did with the mother armies. And when the devil saw what God had done on Jehoshaphat's behalf, they said, back up off that Hebrew. We don't want nothing to do with him no more. Listen, we went there to break him down, and we left. He got more blessed. We got to leave him alone. Leave John Mark alone. We try to hurt him, but God done made us his footstool. Anybody hear me up here? Leave him alone. Leave him alone. They gave him rest, peace, and quiet. You see? You see? You see? Now, saints, listen. This whole story, once again, is a story for us during this fast. To trust our God, to praise our God, even when we're going through. And just know that he's working it out. Don't get nervous. It's already done. He got your back. Right? Even if you got to go through some pain in the end, it's going to be a valley of Baraka. You see? But the greatest blessing I can offer you tonight is the blessing of salvation. Sometimes God will put us through pain to get us to that valley of the cross. Brothers get locked up. They go through brokenness, broken homes. A lot of times that trouble comes because God trying to get our attention. And I want to share with you tonight, amen, if God is trying to get your attention, what he want from you, it's for you to say yes to him. For you to get serious about him and actually get saved. And I'm telling you, when you get saved, the life God bless you with, the abundant life, the joy and the peace, you're going to look back at that little trouble he put you through to put you where you at, to get you to that cross, and you're going to say, God, thank you for that jail cell, for that broken home, for that poverty. Because God, if you wouldn't have put me through that, I would have never got to know your son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. See, that's somebody's testimony in here already. He brought him through a valley to get him a blessing. Who am I preaching to tonight? Submit to him. Take his hand. Don't be stiff-necked, stubborn, hard head. He going to eventually win. But at what cost? Just surrender. Just wave the white flag. Just say, God, you got me. I'm surrounded. You got me, God. I'm ready for my blessing. And all you do is you admit you're a sinner. You believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You believe that he was buried. He, he died on the cross. He was buried in the grave. And he rose the third day. And you just ask the Lord. Not playing, but with all your heart. Lord, save me a sinner. God's going to save you. He's going to transform your situation. <laughs> more than you could ever know. You won't even recognize yourself after God gets finished with you. People won't recognize you either. He's going to make you what he always created you to be. So listen, I've taken enough of your time. We're going to pray tonight. I want you to bow your head with me and say, Most High God, creator of heaven and earth, I thank you for loving me. I admit I've sinned against you, against myself, and against others. 
but I'm ready now. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm tired. I've gone around the same mountain. I'm tired of all this trouble and pain. I surrender to you. Take my life. Take my heart. Take my soul. And use me for your glory. I believe in you, Jesus. That you died on the cross. You were buried in the grave. And on the third day, you rose. Save me now. Use me now. Take this valley and turn it into a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some glory. Thank y'all for putting up with me. Stand to your feet. We're going to say the benediction. Amen. You was going to say something? Which one you was going to say? Brian's going to sing something for y'all. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love y'all. And be blessed. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. How I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight.